Our next presenter is Leanne Myers from WA Substance Users Association. He's going to talk about the community clinic that's operating out of Oshawa. Mm -hmm. Leanne is an endorsed nurse practitioner with nearly two decades specialised experience in viral hepatitis and advanced liver disease and has been working at Washua for nearly two years. And as I said, she'll be talking about the Washua Clinic. Thank you, Leanne. Thanks, Jude. Good morning. I thought I'd talk about Washua's contribution to elimination of hepatitis C. Um, and that will be via our pilot hepatitis C treatment program and the prospective hepatitis C treatment project that we're undertaking at the moment. Um, Washua has two fixed sites in Perth and Bunbury, um, and we have sort of three areas, uh, NSEP, Outreach Services, and the Health Clinic. The NSEP is a little syringe one-for-one -one exchange program with approximately 12,000 client interactions yearly. It provides advocacy and support for people on pharmacotherapies, and also provides health promotion, information resources, and resource production. Um, consultation on policy, consumer issues, and NSCP, and provides training education for the broader ARD sector and other organisations. The outreach services provide a combination of services, including outreach to Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal clients in the metro area via a postal program. And we also have a youth program, safe disposal program, overdose prevention management project and peer administered naloxone program. For those who don't know, we're located <coughs> at 22 uh, 7 Aberdeen Street. Our washer site in Bunbury is 97 Spencer Street. Our hours are from 10 to 5 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 10 to 8 Thursday, Friday, and 10 to 4 Saturday, Sunday. And the clinic is open on Tuesdays and Thursdays for walk-in and booked appointments. Treatment clinic. We offer a variety of services which have been enhanced over the last two years. Uh, we do SDI education testing and treatment, contraceptive advice and scripts for the pill, pap smears, uh, BBD testing and treatment, hepatitis C treatment, advanced liver disease and um, HCC screening or hepatocellular carcinoma screening and provide general care in terms of wound dressings, uh, treatment for infections, cellulitis, urinary tract infections, upper respiratory tract infections naloxone prescribing, vaccinations and general health care. I'm going to call the first part of our program the Pilot Hepatitis C Treatment Program. And the purpose was basically to evaluate the effectiveness of a nurse-led hepatitis C treatment program within a community needle and syringe exchange program. Um, we started off by developing a peer-based initiative which provided specific hepatitis C related information to inform and subsequently make client referrals to the health clinic. Um, the pre-treatment assessment, on-treatment management and follow-up was undertaken by myself. Um, patients received treatment according to current Gastroenterological Society of Australia guidelines. Clinical outcomes were ascertained and self-reported comp compliance was assessed. And patients with advanced liver disease were referred to a tertiary specialist liver clinic, which in this case is Royal Perth Hospital. In terms of the demographic and clinical characteristics of our patient population, there are 21 patients in this pilot group. Mean age is 44. Um, about a um, 3 to 1 ratio in terms of male to females. As you can see, 16 patients uh, were currently injecting. Nine were using amphetamines, three were using heroin, and three used a combination of heroin and amphetamines. In terms of compliance, um, for the compliance was achieved by 20 patients because one of our patients was lost to follow-up. He ended up going back to New Zealand. So all of our patients are reasonably compliant, greater than 95 per cent. We were treated, they were treated with, a, with either Hyvoni, Zepatia or um, Sophosphivir and Declatosphere and one patient was lost to follow-up. In terms of end-of-treatment responses, 15 out of 16 achieved an end-of-treatment response and all of our patients who went to follow up or went to SVR achieved SVR. And this is just a comment from one of our patients. This statement, um, he was one of the first group, group of patients undertaking treatment at Washua. During the hepatitis C treatment, he was also trying to withdraw from Valium and other substances. Um, he was one of three patients who required an intervention during his treatment regimen, and the intervention involved increasing the frequency of clinic visits to provide counselling and support. Our prospect of hepatitis C pro project. We're currently undertaking a project with uh, University of Western Australia to assess the impact of treating chronic hepatitis C on health clinic engagement and ingest injecting risk behaviour. 
we're looking at whether treatment can be performed in the community, which we all know that it can, and without a doctor involvement. We actually provide hepatitis C treatment for free. And we're also looking at, does hepatitis C cure lead to cessation of drug use? Does hepatitis C cure uh, reduce a person's risky injecting behaviour? And what do clients know about washerer services? What services do they use and would they recommend washerer? We've currently got six clients um, in this prospective study um, and I think probably two have reached the end of treatment phase. And we hope to get probably up to 15 in this 18 month period. So what are the barriers um, for patients going on to treatment? Some of them have been alluded to before in terms of reinfection mm -hmm. issues. Obviously drug and alcohol issues. So we have a case management um, person that we involved and we also have in-house counselling. As you're probably well aware, patients have poor venous access. So uh, we have an alternate specimen collection agency and between this other girl and myself, who, she works at Clinipath, we've managed to basically get blood from all patients except one so far. Um, lack of stable accommodation, of course, is an issue for our clients, that Summer Street present. Um, we also, within WASH, provide support services for that. Pre-treatment requirements are an issue in terms of the blood required prior to treatment, so hopefully that will change with the pangenotypic medications becoming available and point of care testing. So at some stage in the future, patients will be able to come into wherever they present, have a finger prick test, you pick your PCR positive, let's treat you. Um, in terms of follow-up, reinfection is an issue, and recently at the Hepatitis Viral Conference in Cairns, um, there was a Kirkton, um, the head of the Kirkton Road Clinic at King's Cross was presenting and he identified a loss to follow up rate of 30 to 40 per cent for patients at the 12 week post treatment visit. So this is an issue um, and I sort of tried to have a think why and thought well maybe patients think once they've had their treatment it's not important to come for follow up. <laughs> And maybe there's another issue for us that we don't um, highlight the importance of, of that 12-week post-treatment visit. With reference for people, um, well, how do we find people for treatment? I think we've got to look at other methods of engagement with marginalised population. So services that you know look after these marginalised populations need to think outside the square. And reinfection issues, um, as Holly and Janice alluded to. I think, and these, this has been an issue at Washer, we've had one patient that's um, reinfected himself after an SVR. So I think it's really important to reinforce the issues around reinfection, such as, you know, for us we look at client injecting groups, the injecting situation, and discuss this with the patient at the end of treatment and for subsequent follow-up visits. What are the advantages of community-based treatment? Flexibility for the patient in terms of um, appointments, there's no rigid rules, there's no cost to the patient, there's improved access, everything's done at one location. Um, improved patient outcomes in terms of increased satisfaction, reduced health morbidities, improved accessibility to other services such as accommodation and counselling. Treatment provides a point of connectedness to engage clients and reduce felt and enacted stigma. Felt stigma is internal stigma or self-stigmatisation and that refers to the shame and expectation of discrimination that prevents people from talking about their experiences and stops them from seeking help. Enacted stigma or external stigma discrimination refers to the experience of unfair treatment by others. So what's the reality of working uh, with people who inject drugs? It's often based on stereotypes, it's often based on what is reported in the media and often not based on experience. People who inject drugs have negative experience with healthcare providers, therefore they are often fearful. What's the reality? Not all stereotypes are true, not all media reports are true. What you put into a relationship is what you will get out of them. Probably talking to the converter here. but. If you are disrespectful or judgmental, then your patient will respond the same way. It's important to take time to build rapport, be friendly, concerned and not judgmental. And not every health issue links back to drug use. Thank you. I have one. Don't go.
Leanne, what's the criteria for people going onto trials? Are they Sort of, yes, yeah? But they may be sort of not sharing or... No, no. Well, you discuss that. That's about harm reduction. That's the discussion you have with patients on treatment and, you know, clean inject equipment and all that stuff around that harm reduction. Yeah. So I think you'll find most patients don't share. Because uh, they don't and, need to anymore. Yeah, that's right. right. And they know where to come to get clean equipment. Especially not clean because you're providing That's right. Mm. Leanne, you said the um, treat, there's no cost no. to the client, so who picks up the copay? Washer. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. mm -hmm. um, my question was around the point you put up about, which I may have misinterpreted, but treatment leading to cessation of drug use. Is, can you say a bit more about that? Well, that, that's, I guess, uh, an overall sure. arching statement, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> With our study at the moment, we're looking at, we're um, distributing questionnaires three times during the treatment period and looking to see if it minimises, if injecting behaviour does reduce and that type of thing, and what are the risks around that. So I think engagement, um, treatment is the, the point where people engage and then continuing engagement, I think, will have a positive effect and that will hopefully lead to people changing behaviour. It may not be obvious in the first, you know, six months, 12 months, and maybe five years, 10 years down the track. Yeah, it might just be to feel better overall and want to take it another step. Yeah. 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 Uh, any questions for the regions, for Leanne? No? Okay. Okay, well, we're actually breaking from 